Hello, Mr. Hinnon here, and I am going to go through the Picket Fence Freefall, the Acceleration of Gravity Lab, for those that missed it. So you've got the setup, you've got the Google Doc, I'm just going to show you how we collect data, and then I'm going to put some data on there so you have the idea of what exactly is going on. So on the computer, we're in the computer physics lab, we've set up the computer to use what's called a picket fence. So this picket fence is this little device. And really all it is is a piece of clear plastic, but it's got little black markings on here. And I guess the idea is it looks like a picket fence when you turn it sideways. But we're also going to use it with this little device over here, which is a thing called a photo gate. So I'm going to pull that off of here so you can kind of look at it. So it's a thing called a photo gate. And the idea is when this is running, there's a beam of infrared light shining in between here and so when this this picket fence passes through here it's going to block the light when it sees the black and not block the light when it's the clear so basically you can see this with the light on top it's basically going to block and unblock that so as it passes through you'll see that light on top flash that's just an indication that you're doing it so I'm going to put this back up Now, what we're working on is we're trying to find the acceleration of gravity. So we need something that's not going to be affected by air as it falls. So this picket fence is actually going to be dropping like this, where it can fall without very much air. Because you don't have a very, it's very skinny this way, so you don't have a lot of air resistance as it falls. And so we're going to let it physically fall towards the ground. Now besides the fact that air affects it, we also saw in the video that a lot of people think that it falls at a constant rate or a constant speed. I never really liked the statement of it falls at a constant rate because that kind of gives the impression that it's a constant speed, but it's not. It's actually accelerating. I can see that this thing accelerates towards the ground. It started out at a low speed and it just gets faster and faster. So we're gonna try to measure that. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna set up Get my photo gate over here again. Is we're going to be collecting data as we actually physically drop this through the photo gate. And it's going to collect some data. So I'm going to set up the computer so we can actually collect the data and then I'll show it to you. This is described in your Google Doc. So now I've got the computer all ready to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to physically hold it above this photo gate and drop it through completely drop it through because I don't want to stop it at all. I don't want to affect it at all. What you will find is back over here on our computer and I'm going to bring it in closer so you can see this is we end up with a series of points. So I've got triangles here on my velocity graph. I've got squares up here on my distance versus time graph. And what we're going to do, we know these triangles are gradually increasing. So that tells me we're definitely accelerating. But the other thing I'm going to do in here is I'm going to highlight these triangles. And I'm going to hit, this computer program actually has the ability to do a linear fit. So we're going to draw the best fit line through there. And what this line tells me is it tells me the acceleration because the slope on a velocity time graph is acceleration. I could do that with my distance time graph as well. However, one of the things I notice is I look at my distance time graph and I'm going to provide a copy of this. You will actually get a few points that are above the line and a few points that are below the line. So the line is not actually the best fit. It's actually more of a curve. I'm going to show you that in just a moment because I'm going to highlight Actually, there's one more point over here that I'm going to grab and bring in, but I'm going to highlight my points again. And this time I'm going to do a parabola, which is a quadratic fit. And what we're going to see is the quadratic fit has a perfect correlation of one, but our linear fit doesn't have a correlation that's perfect to one where our velocity does. So this is, in essence, what the lab was. Really what we ended up doing is we ended up doing this six times. 
so we could collect a lot of data. It would be better to actually do 60 times or a thousand times, but six seemed like a good number. We can get kind of a range. We're gonna use that data. So I'm gonna actually give you that data so you have it to use to finish out the lab, but I wanna at least show you what we were trying to do and how we were using this thing called a picket fence. So I hope you enjoyed this virtual lab and you'll take that data and be able to do something with it. Talk to you later.